Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders is the third in the Avril Monsters quadrilogy, released in 2000. It retained much of the same talent from the previous films, including the direction of Chris Zimmerman. It was unfortunately the last film for Daphne's voice actress, Mary Kay Bergman, who passed away shortly before its release and had the film dedicated to her. After a relatively troubled production of Witch's Ghost, the team was given more freedom with Alien Invaders. There's a noticeably different tone, with a bigger focus on romance between Shaggy and the new character, Crystal, and a wider variety of characters than the typical affair. This makes the mystery more engaging, as there are a decent number of plausible suspects, and enough hints to figure out who's behind it before the big reveal. Overall, Alien Invaders is a very fun time, with good energy, solid art direction, and three fairly solid musical numbers. It didn't have much of a lasting impact on the franchise, but it was the last film made using hand-painted cells, as opposed to digital animation, which marks it as the end of an era. The only real negatives are it being on the shorter end, a scant 72 minutes including credits, and the relatively early villain reveal, at only 50 minutes in, making the remainder of the third act feel sort of fillery. The opening, however, is suitably atmospheric, first showing a group of scientists studying the airwaves to establish the alien theme. Then we jump immediately to the gang driving through a dusty Nevada desert, with some nice blue hues. Despite this being in a sandy location, they make sure to include a variety of different areas and variations, which is much appreciated, and helps the whole thing appear less samey. Another interesting diversion is the outfits worn by Fred, Daphne, and Velma. Due to the heat, they all have slight variations on their typical wear, which does show at least a little bit of care from the production side. Shaggy, of course, is wearing the same old thing, but it's a timeless ensemble, so it's understandable. Most Scooby films follow a very similar formula, just like the show. There's an opening mystery, an inciting incident, exploration of a location, then haunting stuff. Alien Invaders skips the first couple of parts, jumping right into the aliens. First their ship, then the creatures themselves showing up and chasing around Scooby and Shaggy to a rendition of the classic theme song. It's a fairly well done and exciting chase. The alien designs are relatively unique, while still maintaining the classic style. They are updated for the 90s, but would still fit in with many of the designs from the Where Are You era, and their bulkiness helps them stand out from Little Green Men. Their hoverbikes as well allow for dynamic chases, without them having to run on their stubbly little legs. There's some decent jokes, although comedy is definitely not the focus of this film. The crazy old man archetype is surprisingly helpful, and a decent painter, making sure to include a Starry Night reference in his collection of pictures. After Scooby and Shaggy get abducted, which is a fine, if expected scene, they meet the main focus of the film, Crystal and her dog Amber. The two boys take to them immediately, and with Crystal being the only other hippie for the last 20 years, it makes sense. There are hints that something is wrong, however, as a few bits of advanced technology are revealed early on, but passed off as spy stuff. After half an hour of getting to know her, Shaggy has a Yellow Submarine-inspired fantasy of them getting together and having kids, including a tie-dye wedding, which is a funny concept. The song is again pretty decent, if not terribly inspiring, and while the whole thing is basically just a diversion, it's a fun one. They then quickly get back to the main plot, and eventually uncover the reason behind the monster attacks, a gold mine. It's revealed the aliens are not real, and just people in masks, evoking more classical Scooby-Doo plotlines, where capitalism drives all. There's a bit more tension than usual as well, with the scientists seemingly planning to murder the kids and their fake guards bringing actual guns. Probably one of the first for the franchise. There's also a fun chase scene here including a door gag with cave entrances, which has been absent from the previous two films. That's also when the real monsters aspect kicks in, as it's real that Crystal and her dog are weird alien creatures. This is a fine, take it or leave it moment, although at least the designs are relatively neat. After the final bit of action, which features a bulldozer duel and Scooby almost definitely killing a man, everything is resolved in a neat little bow, although Crystal has to go back to her home planet, leaving not just Scooby and Shaggy heartbroken, but Fred, who breaks down into tears. While it doesn't quite muster that much emotion in the viewer, it's a decently well done moment. Overall the film is solidly competent. It's well made, has some good monster designs, a decent story, and nice atmosphere. I'm naturally prejudiced against alien films, because they're just not my cup of tea, but this is a really good attempt at one. They kept me engaged the entire time. Going to the tier list, it's hard to put anywhere but the A tier, as it does everything it sets out to do so well. It's the worst of the 90s quadrilogy so far, but, but that's not a bad place to be. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Please like, subscribe, comment, and be well.